brothers and sisters, long before Sprint, AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, Boost Mobile, come on somebody, Amen. ever had an unlimited text messaging program. God had an unlimited text messaging program called the Bible. I would submit to you that the Bible is God's extended text message to us today. And I want to focus specifically on an ancient text message sent to us by the Apostle Paul to the believers at the church at Rome in the fifth chapter of the book of Romans. It's a powerful message, and at the first verse it begins, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access. Everybody say access. access. We have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man some might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only in this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. I want to preach from this subject this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Y'all acting like you're scared of your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say it with a loud voice. Say, neighbor. neighbor. O-M-G. O-M-G. Now, perhaps your neighbor does not know what that means. So look back at that same neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, my oh, my God. Now tell the truth today, just by a show of hands. How many of you text message at least once a week? All right. See, not long ago, Sister Nikki, I was riding down State Street, and there was a man that was swerving all over the road. And I thought at first, Ma, that the man was drunk until I rode up alongside of him and found out that he was driving with his knees and text messaging with both his hands. Now, I must admit that it alarmed me because I have been guilty mm -hmm, of taking my eyes off the road and my hands off the steering wheel just to send or respond to a text message. Okay, confession time. How many of you have ever text 
while you drove. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't lie in church. You, you in church. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I want to tell you as your pastor and as your friend that I'm not comfortable with us texting while driving. And I'm sharing this with you because I suspect that there are a lot of Sister Martha textually active people in church right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it greatly concerns me that far too many of us are practicing unsafe text. Come on. That now, now, I know that some of you are saying I practice safe text, but you would be amazed at how many of us practice unsafe text. There are some of us who text while walking down the street, text while driving a car, text while riding a bicycle, or text while right in the middle of a conversation like you're not even standing there. Am I in the right house? As a matter of fact, emergency room physicians are reporting that a growing number of persons are showing up with textually related injuries because they're having unsafe texts. Look at your neighbor and say, don't have unsafe texts. Now for most of us, texting is a way of life. And we've even developed a texting language a system of abbreviations that communicate what we're trying to say. You know text language, don't you? Well, Pastor, I don't need to know text language. It's NBD. No big deal. Uh huh. I'll learn it L8R later. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Go on if you want to stay behind the times when your children are texting things such as LGH. Let's get high. Y'all looking at me funny. How about LH6? Let's have sex. It's getting quiet in here now. Or oh, how about LMAO? Laughing my blank off. Am I in the right house? Oh yeah, how about this one, Sister Cara? A3, anytime, anywhere, any place. Okay, Pastor, AYS, are you serious? Oh yeah, B-I-O-N, believe it or not. Brothers and sisters, there is another acronym that you're probably thinking about right now as you're contemplating all of the things that some of these young folk are texting right here while we're having church. And that's the three-letter acronym OMG. Look at somebody and say, oh my God. See, if we ever pondered how great and how awesome and how amazing our God is, we would say, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we ever really thought about uh, the expanse of God's love, the depth of God's grace, the power of God's mercy, or the benefit of God's favor, our inevitable response would be, oh my God. If we ever pondered how great and awesome and how amazing our God is, our inexorable retort would be, OMG, oh my God. If we ever took a moment to think about how far God has brought us, how safe God has kept us, how high God has lifted us, and how much God has done for us, our inescapable reaction would be, oh my God. Do I have any witnesses here that know that God has blessed us, kept us, brought us, lifted us, and we're glad about it? With his blood, he has saved us. With his power, he has raised us. To God be the glory for the things 
he has done. Is there anybody on your road today who doesn't mind testifying that just 